I said, so how about this? Let's uh, create a, a Messiah uh, who will uh, advocate service to Rome, like uh, who will say things like render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, but unto God that which is God's, which pretty clearly says no compromise involved with paying taxes to Caesar. Or um, if, if anyone forces you to go a mile with him, go with him too. Well, that refers to the Roman law of occupation that said that uh, a Roman soldier was tired of carrying his gear. could say, hey, you, uh, come over here and carry this for me for a mile. Well, you kind of had to do it or you were in trouble. Well, it says, you only have to carry it for a mile, but why don't you carry it for two uh, and uh, kill him with kindness? And uh, Jesus is depicted as having Roman centurions come up to him, would you come and heal my son? Cause I know it'll work if you do it. Uh, and I'm seeing you command these demons and all that. And Jesus says, wow, get a load of this. I've never found faith like this in Israel. Uh, I mean, that's, <laughs> uh, or uh, where he says uh, to the Pharisees, one day you're going to be grinding your teeth uh, when you see uh, the people coming from the east and the west to dine at the table at the kingdom of God, along with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you guys left out. Uh, there's, there's a lot of this stuff, and uh, Jesus says nothing really against the Romans, but uses them as good examples and all this. It sounds awfully pro-Roman. This, let me get this straight, this is about a Jewish Messiah who's uh, talking about the kingdom of God and this is what it means. This sounds dubious. Well, uh, Joe Atwill and uh, uh, Valiant and Fahey and others say uh, it's not just uh, innocent. This must be the product of Romans trying to calm Jews down. Uh, well, have your Judaism, have your Messiah, but don't give us a flack anymore. Their theory points out, puts in a new light, uh, the argument of SGF's Brandon. Uh, he wrote a couple of books, one called Jesus and the Zealots, another, The Fall of Jerusalem and the Christian Church. And uh, he says, he noticed these, these uh, pacifistic things, turn the other cheek and all that. And he said, Christ, they're telltale signs that uh, the Jesus movement was a violent revolutionary movement, the so-called cleansing of the temple and various other things that are pretty striking. Uh, and uh, that uh, he says, once Jesus was executed as a rebel leader, uh, they, they had a movement going that didn't dissolve, but they kind of uh, retooled it. So uh, hopes for revolution, well, that's a dead issue, but let's stay together. And they had to kind of refashion who Jesus was for the sake of PR. Uh, hey, don't persecute us. Uh, that's over. And in fact, Jesus wasn't even a rebel. That was a frame up. Uh, we're, we pose you no problem. Uh, well, uh, that makes sense. Uh, it, it's, you have to explain why is it so pro-Roman. Well, this, their theory uh, that uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the Flavian dynasty instead refashioned Jesus for the same reason, to say no more revolution, that puts a whole new light on it, and uh, I, it's, it's e at least equally plausible. Uh, one passage in the Gospels that's very interesting in regard to the pro-Roman thing I've, I've mentioned already is where uh, Jesus is asked, is it lawful to, for Jews to pay taxes to Caesar or not? And this, everybody recognizes that this is a kind of a setup, that uh, if Jesus publicly says, oh yeah, what the heck, pay him the tax, there are going to be some Jewish radicals that say, this guy's a traitor. He can't uh, pay taxes to the pagan Roman state. Maybe we ought to get rid of this guy. Uh, and uh, if he says, uh, no, it's not lawful for Jews to do it, to just tell them to stuff it, uh, well, he's going to get in trouble with the Roman authorities. So how does Jesus slip out of it? 
Well, you don't really need that backup to, to the political angle. Uh, and though it, it can be read that way legitimately, I kind of think that what Jesus is doing is a classic case of Jewish halakha, that is reasoning about the, the text uh, and answering new questions from an old text that doesn't explicitly deal with them. In the temple, you had to offer sacrificial animals and they had to be in grade A condition. So rather than risk bringing the, the sheep or whatever from home and risk it breaking its leg uh, on the hillsides on the way, they said, look, we'll have the animals here. You can buy them at the temple and they'll be approved already. Uh, but what's that? You, you only have Roman denarii, uh, Roman coins with images of the Caesar who minted them. Uh, you can't use that in, in uh, God's temple. But that, that's why they had money changers, you know, in the scene he throws over the table of money changers. Why were they there? Well, uh, to say, uh, we'll take the Roman money and probably use it for Roman tax collection. They handled that the temple. And we will give you the equivalent amount in, in uh, Hebrew and Phoenician coins, which don't, they're legal tender too, but they don't have images on them, you know, the commandment against graven images. And uh, so you can buy the animals and sacrifice them that way. Well, I think Jesus is depicted as saying, look, you can't render Roman denarii to God. They won't take them in the temple, in other words. I mean, how else are you going to render the money to God? Uh, and uh, so you, you can't give God Roman coins. They're idolatrous, technically. Um, and since you can't do that, what is the compromise involved in giving them back to Caesar? I mean, he apparently owns them, his face is on them, so there's no compromise involved. Uh, and it's not because we're cowards. No, the, the whole rationale we already use at the temple for not taking Roman coins certainly implies that uh, there's no harm in giving them to Caesar, pagan that he is. Uh, and I, which I think is brilliant. And, uh, and so it isn't necessarily some sort of pro-Roman thing. I, I don't think it is, in fact. It kind of harbors a sort of contempt in a way. But you can read this various ways. So I, I'm very open to the Flavian hypothesis, but this isn't necessarily evidence for it. Uh, Jesus actually points out that it belongs to somebody when he, when he uh, says, show me the denarius, which is what it says in the Greek, uh, whose face is on it? Oh, Caesar's. Oh, there you go. Uh, it's his anyway. You don't find God's picture on it. Uh,